Hey, welcome to the tech cap of the world, Kernersville, North Carolina. My name is Bobby Davis, and I'm here with Kevin Doyle. Kevin, do we have a controversial topic today? <laughs> Apparently, we do. It's. I, just, it's, I mean, everybody has an really opinion on this in chat already. Coke or Pepsi? Do we need to know? Do we need to know? Um, I don't know. Do we? Clearly, it's Pepsi. It's made in North Carolina, so it has to be superior, right? <laughs> I don't know. There's people in Georgia will, uh, will definitely be, be yelling upset. at you, saying it's saying it's yeah. Coke. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So we picked a uh, controversial topic. We'll tell like why we've kind of picked it. Um, yeah. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, but we'll talk yeah. about so this this discussion kind of um, or this this topic spawned off a um, an article that we read that actually came across yeah. sort of my path last week i think maybe the week before yeah and we've talked about it kind of off here we're like yeah hey, let's do a topic on that so yeah. yeah we made a little bit of a baby title <laughs> but that's how youtube works right that's <laughs> we have an opinion that's what we're here to so... do we have an opinion which everybody else in here does too and that's okay yeah. it's okay to have an opinion um but we'll tell you kind of why we have our opinion and we'll talk about right. this article and um yeah as to why we've chosen one because we yeah, I'm looking at NC17's comment. We have to put that up to start it off with. I think that's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so, um. <laughs> he's always got the jokes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Only one <laughs> shall leave. That's it. That's it. That's it. So, um, action is coming. So, the article yeah. I am referring to, let me pull this up, um, which I blatantly stole the card for today's uh uh youtube card design by the way because i thought it was so good i'm like it's absolute perfection i'm not even going to change it yeah. um right. i made my own version of this card because i was like ah it's just really good but the article is uh this one right here uh, okay let me blow it up a little bit Let's see it uh where are we? and you know not to be self-serving we didn't write this so this is someone else that's writing this yeah, yeah. Um, this so is charles chen. chen this is charles chen we don't uh, know I, don't, him. I don't know charles i've never spoken to charles yeah yeah this came across yeah. this was originally written the end of last year so the end of uh yeah. november 21 but it does have some updates in it too so and we'll talk about yeah. those as well so this article was entitled case for c shopping.net it's a medium article i can't remember how i found it i think it came on um daily dev maybe or it was on yeah one of my um uh email newsletter things that i get it was on one of those things and i was just like oh okay this is an interesting topic and i read it and i was like wow okay we actually agree with everything that's going on here yeah which is weird because most of the time this is to the opposite when you when you read especially in uh right twitter land you know if you mention that you like c sharp you might as well you know, right. like to kill baby seals or something. <laughs> it seemed mean, seemingly so. <laughs> and it's funny you talk about that. I tweeted something, yeah. I think it was last week or whatever. I was like, if you yeah. if, if you looked at, at the Twitterverse, the tech Twitterverse, you would think everyone was running Linux. And I happened to see, right. and the reason yeah. I say that is because I saw a stat where Linux was like 2% yeah. of the entire user base of OSs. Right. I was like, okay, yeah. That just tells you everything you need to know. All right, cool. So what's the first point this dude makes? Yeah, so this Charles. is great. So so, so Charles here, let's just to clarify who he is. Charles is a, is a developer mm -hmm. who has a background in JavaScript, right? Yeah. Um, using uh, VBScript, I guess, or JScript. Um, yeah. So he's, so we're talking about, what we're talking about here is backend um, technologies, right? Node versus, versus .NET for, for backend stuff here. Um, so this is somebody who, who is very familiar with JavaScript, used it for years, and has basically switched. So he actually says here, yeah. look, I like this article, all this line right here in the article. If you would ask me six years ago, favorite program language, you would have said JavaScript. This is somebody who is yep. deep in the JavaScript kind of kind of side of things. Um, and the first thing he points out about this was the dependency problem with JavaScript. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've seen so, this. So like, I do think this too. And so um, one of the things that we see is like the dependency problem. So you're bringing in all of these other libraries in here to make stuff work. And then that library changes the underpinnings of your app now changes. And so those packages, there's been like lots of problems. You know, I think there's some famous ones um, that uh, because they aren't really vetted, they're just open source, which is fantastic until the guy that's writing the open source library decides to tank his own library because he's mad that no one paid him for his open source library. <laughs> which did millions happen. Of people are using it. Yeah, and millions <laughs> of people are using it. And so he broke everyone's site and they're like, can he do that? And I'm like, yeah, he can. It's his, you know, like, yeah. so, you know, 
is it good for your career? Probably not. But, right, you know, right. Hey, yeah, whatever. he didn't do himself yeah, like, any favors, but he probably <laughs> like he probably felt great yeah. for a day afterwards and then had like, you know, yeah. delete his remorse or something, I hope. Yeah. And so there's a lot of this dependency change. Now, how does .NET handle this? And um, why is it what I think better is like, right. we have something called the .NET framework. And so for the large part of the things that you need to do, the .NET framework, even though it is open source, is managed and packaged and everything by Microsoft. So it's a lot more dependable in this chain. For its version control of this chain, definitely cool. Um, and so we use something called NuGet so you get packages can be brought into your to your project you know and you can also click the ones that you want to bring in here you have a lot of other dependencies and it's it's a little bit more brittle on the javascript side i'll, I'll be nice so like it's a little bit more brittle yeah you actually side. likened this as well to being like when one of these if you have a dependency and one of those dependency updates it's like it's a nightmare because there's no kind of they could there could be updates on you could have 10 different dependencies they all update at different times and it's like keeping that chain right blowing is kind of difficult. Right. So when you when you factor in the .NET framework, that is um, not that it can't have and largely resolved. I mean, like, you know, there are some times some right. cases where you you can bring in a third party library. Um, but the way that it's handled through NuGet, you do have to go out and get the new version. So you can run on the old version of your library forever and ever and ever and ever if you want to. So Right. And we've said this, you've so anyway, said this in a lot of different yeah. ways though, too, that like being contained and being from Microsoft and being all under one umbrella is a good thing. Some people see this as a it's bad a, thing. It's like, they yeah. see it as like, oh, it's Microsoft. It's this big, big conglomerate company. They can't tell me what to do. I love open source. Yeah. Right. Which is nothing wrong with open source. It's nothing wrong with it because some of the libraries you get in and uh, that you can get in, you get are open source libraries and they're written by other vendors. And I get all that, but it's just a lot more, in my opinion, a little bit more stable and not nearly as fragile. Now, I've always, you can, you'll see tweets that come out from people that I know all the time, like, man, starting up my first Node project, like, what the heck? How do I get this thing started? How do I cobble yeah. all this together? What do I do? And then when I show people a MVC project <laughs> at Bye. a conference or something, they think that I'm, I, I'm not telling them everything. It's cheating. It's magic. Like I say, file new project and make a couple of selections and hit run and suddenly the thing's up and running against the database and they're like whoa what else do you have to do right. that's it it's built hold in. on not only is it up and running against the database you have authentication authorization you have a couple of web pages yeah. built had crud right yeah cr exactly. already scaffolded like it's scaffolded out and like, <laughs> like you know there's a lot to it that um that people don't really know about until you've used it for the first time now the other thing that i think and i don't know if he's going to go into this because i haven't read all the way through the article but like the one I want to bring up, and if he mentions it, it's great, is not every app should be a single page app. So the reason this yeah, started true. was we had SPAs, which are single page applications, and JavaScript facilitated making those better. Up until that point, we had built what we called MPAs, multi-page applications, which means everything had its own HTML and everything had to be duplicated um, across the pages like navbar and footers and things like that. And so frameworks arose to solve that problem like ASP.NET. And the one he mentioned was like web forms, old school web forms um, back in the late nineties up to, you know, still today people are still using it. And so now I think you're seeing a trend going back and you're like, man, you know what? I mean, having everything on one page is bad for SEO. Number one, it's terrible for it. You know, and so number two, do we need to put everything on one page and managing security and state and all these things that go on with that? It makes it more difficult to do. Like, what am I viewing at? So I've got, a, I'm swapping components in and out. And so they're building a lot of things in the JavaScript world to simulate multi pages. And then when you go to MVC, you're like, ah, just make another view. I mean, like, yeah, it's, real it's a lot easier to do, a lot easier to think about. Um, so. You know, so that's one of the things I think one of the divides that happened, you know, in the last decade or so that we went away from multi-page app and JavaScript was kind of seen to that. And now I think you're seeing a trend going back because of things like performance, security, bloat in JavaScript things that are just all kinds of libraries in there. And it doesn't really matter to the current view or the current component you're looking at. So pages become a lot more bloated. And I think that's one of the issues that people are now starting to think about and go, hmm, is this a good idea? Is there another way to do this? And then 
you know, and then someone like me goes to a conference and shows NBC that's been around for 20 years. I'm like, <laughs> wow, that newfangled thing is cool. Like, what, how did you do that? Like, what, what, that makes it a lot easier. So I think it's a lot easier with um, ASP.NET in its current iteration. The guy's right, though. If you go back and look at the original ASP, classic ASP pages, it, it was kind of a nightmare when it first started out. Right. So those frameworks right. were just coming out. And that was Microsoft's first go at it. Yep. Yeah. You mentioned something there, which is the next point in here, the security problem mm -hmm. with JavaScript. It's huge. You kind of touched on this a little it's, bit. Yeah. Vulnerabilities um, in these um, things that are, I mean, just lots of things. Yeah, it's so, kind of crazy um, how long some of these vulnerabilities stayed out there for. It's like it's a long, long yeah. time. Um, and yeah. when and when you again, you're in this ecosystem where your dependencies are from a million different places. Keeping security tight is difficult. Yeah, yeah. And then just identity in, in in general. Like, so I'm on a single page app. Most of my stuff runs on the client side. That we're, we are talking about Node as well. But like implementing um, those server side checks and keeping a single page app, it, it becomes more complicated and a little harder to do. Doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just that out of the box, when you have things like ASP.identity or Azure Identity out of the box and that it's already worked, the middleware and everything, people underestimate how robust that platform is. And whereas on JavaScript side, you gotta kind of figure out your own stuff. And actually, how yeah. I tell you what, how easy it is to implement some of the security things in .NET yeah. too. It's some of the times you're literally just it's like you're typing in a a, a word like to get it. Yeah, to, like, it's like everything yeah. happens in the, on the back end. It's like yeah. you know, it's all the magic box, right? You just type this thing and it yeah. becomes secure. It's it's smart. Yeah, basically for a back end action in a controller um, or web API, you can just basically mark it up with what we call ASP filters and say authorize, and right. then an action will not execute unless someone is logged in. And, and that's and that's it. That's it's genius. Yeah. And you also can also tell it all not only you have to be authenticated, but you also have to be in a certain role to run this action. So there's a lot of very robust claims and roles, and we don't want to teach that here. I mean, but like right. it's a very right. robust security back end, and, and people underestimate that. I mean, they just really do. I mean, like as far as the other things that you gotta do. So it's on the um, in one of the lessons in our new .NET 6 course that's coming out, um, I've been editing some of these, so I've been watching some of these. Yeah. And one of the things that you mentioned is the difference between um, rendering an element on a page versus hiding an element on a page. And that was something right, that I thought yeah. was interesting and was super easy in .NET. Because when I saw it, I was like, yeah. oh, wow, that's like, wow. Okay, that's easy. Yeah. So not only can you like hide something on a page, you can also just not render it. Like in other words, like it's not in, it's never delivered to the client, period. Right. So therefore, so I think it was a classic governor. I think, I think it was funny. It's the political thing, but it was, but it was true. <laughs> the guy said someone hacked their web page, you know, and someone had yeah. just viewed the source yeah, yeah, in a that. hidden field. It was so security number, like, you know, yeah. and it's like a classic thing. Well, I, I, you know, I type type equals hidden on that input box. It shouldn't show up, right? Well, it's in the source. Like, so like you need to not deliver that to the end user whatsoever. And I, I wouldn't even, I mean, I know that he's uneducated in the ways of programming, but like, it's not a hack. And and like, he shouldn't have come out and, and you know, we're going to invoke the attorney general. And we're like, dude, you just released it to everybody. You know, like it, most, it's not even being, <laughs> it's most like things we see in the news these days that are hacks aren't hacks. They're just, yeah. The mistakes just that happen. somebody's made <laughs> generally. Yeah. You know, and then politicians shouldn't talk about it unless they have like a guy on their staff that says, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Like, let, let, let me explain this to you first, then you can just go and explain it if, if you choose before to. Before you have a press conference. I, but I actually suggest you probably don't. <laughs> yeah, before, the, before just, the press conference, can we talk about hidden elements on a HTML page? Just real quick. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's just going to go, isn't it, though? It's I know, like, yeah. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing on here. So the performance problem. And this is the yeah. biggest one. This was back, so yeah. this was back 2019. There are some updates down here. For 2021 yeah. because this has got even better in favor of yeah. .NET. and i'm talking like yeah like this this originally had two times faster than node it's it's better it's, than that now it's better than that so when we scroll 10x down here 12x it, it's, yeah, like, it's like it's like that. i think they said 8x in these latest things yes yeah. yeah um yeah it was um i don't know if he quotes the actual thing here but we saw another article that was talking about 8x as fast um yep. from these from this july 2022 update which is the latest tech and power benchmarks Yep. Um, it was up there with being as fast as C++ and Rust. 
in a lot of cases it is and then that's amazing um, when you think about what microsoft's doing and i go back today i think it's david fowler the guy that's one of the primary yeah. principal engineers on the dotnet framework and the dotnet language and everything that they do in dotnet all things um, is that he had to convince microsoft management that performance is a feature and so now when everyone is going to cloud runtimes so i'm going to azure i'm going to aws and um, i have a method or a thing that i run a lot but it takes a long time to run. And if I could make that run faster and use less memory, my bill goes down. And so what people are showing you, like if you if you took a web API that was written in .NET 5, which was just, you know, just not too long ago, versus .NET 6, they were talking about a 50% performance increase under certain scenarios, like, but it was way faster. And so like now when you go, this is why we make the case for .NET. So let's say that um, you're running a multi-million dollar operation um, and you're running it on Node.js and you're like, okay, here's my AWS bill. And the, and the consultant comes to you and goes, what if we cut that in half? Would that mean something to you? You know, what if we cut that bill in half by just improving right. the performance on the back end? The answer Not to only the would you service your customer. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm gonna yes. cut my bill in half. Definitely and yes. we'll, we'll, we'll also, service the customers better. It'll be faster, more performant. They'll like using your software better because it's just quicker, but we'll also can save you money on the days back in. And that's the case. One of the big cases for the .NET rework in general, from the .NET framework for five to, you know, .NET core to now five, now six and now seven coming out, yep. which is faster than six. And so there's still finding ways to improve the performance over and over again. And you can only do that when you have a multi-billion dollar company or trillion dollar company behind this effort, they're investing millions and millions and millions of dollars into making sure that .NET is performant. And when you say that under certain scenarios, C Sharp, which is a managed language, performs equivalently to Rust in some of these web scenarios is flat out amazing that they could do oh, that. Yeah. Um, because Rust is, you know, it's a whole different paradigm of types of languages out there. And that's pretty amazing that they, they've achieved that now and the rust has its uses and we're not even talking we're just specifically talking about web development at this point so i'm not saying that c sharp is faster than rust that's not what i'm saying i'm saying on certain these web scenarios they are getting stupidly close to that and when you say okay well we'll just use rust well okay well go invent your own tooling you know like um <laughs> you know go right. go make your web framework go make all the other stuff to do this and then come back and talk to me before you say that you're faster. And that's that's really where this case for .NET is coming in. It's like, okay, it has the tooling, it has the framework, it has all the packages, all the libraries and everything to build modern websites. And it's stinking fast and it's got security. So those are the two things right now. So I think that's the case we have for .NET. It doesn't mean that you can't write these things in Node. It doesn't mean you can't. Right, right. You absolutely right. You when, you, when it comes down to it, you can build anything with either 100%. of these things that's that's yeah. yeah but to sit there and go it's preference is not really super accurate you're deciding to use node because you want to use javascript and that's a perfectly logical reason to which do we'll it. talk about in a second as to yeah. why you're choosing that too yeah which is but in this the article as well. you go to american airlines and they're going like we cannot do baggage claim on node because it won't work i mean like you know like it it'll fall down on its face. So we're going to do this in um, a .NET backend because of the performance, the speed, and those kind of things. And so then the choice becomes sort of clear at this point, you know? Right. All right. Right. Cool. Okay. So I'm sure I'm, I'm, I've got, got a lot is, of questions. Well, there. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one thing we're going to come to here. So this is kind of yeah. harsh. He's, he's kind of harsh in his summary here. It says, so server-side JavaScript sucks. Why is it everywhere? So why is it so yeah. prevalent? And, and I do yeah. agree with his summaries right here. Uh, JavaScript's easy, flex, uh, flexible, use it in many ways, front end and back end. And like I said, he yep. loved it originally. So for new yep. developers, it's easy to learn one language um, yep. and apply it to front end and back end. And that's why people think like, and literally somebody in chat um, right here, look, somebody's literally made this argument right here, right in chat. Um, so I'm going to learn Node.js because there are Node.js. That's, and, and that's, and that's the reasoning, right? That's the exactly. reason you're making that decision because you already know JavaScript, right. so you're just going to do Node. And then hot reload is like crack, which has been solved. This is hot reload is well, now on. I'm going to be fair to JavaScript on this one. I, um, hot reload still has some work. I mean, like there's certain scenarios where it's not. Right. If, if you're adding files and things, it doesn't. 
it's not yeah, great and, on that side. Right? And it does making... have to go through a build process, a compile process, right. and then it will automatically refresh the browser. But I'm guessing this was done at a point where it didn't exist, right? This is pre it, did, no. it didn't exist you at had all to, like, at this point. Stop so it was like you had to start and right. stop and start, you know, right. that kind of stuff. Right. So, so what we've got now is better than we had. It doesn't run on the client. So all your JavaScript runs on the client. So all your code is right there in the browser. And when you change that browser code, the browser automatically refreshes. So what we have to do is we have to compile it, push it down to the browser, and then the browser will refresh. So, but that takes, can take, um, you know, depending on the size of your project, seconds, you know, right. but it's not quite as instantaneous as it is before, so. Yep, yep. So the summary part of this article here too, I found this, this interesting in this part right here. Um, cool. So it says the proliferation of um, demand for software engineers meant that many developers coming out of boot camps were taught JavaScript for front end. Since they're already using mm -hmm. no toolchain for the front end, developers from that track only need to stretch a bit more to become a full stack engineer. And that's the kind of the, the logic, right? That's the logic that somebody yeah. has when I already know JavaScript, so I can, I can become a full stack engineer by just picking up Node. Um, yeah. So his summary, I love, I love this, this sentence. When all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. It's cheaper and that's less true. time consuming. Um, lots, lots. So, yeah. what? Why teach people and new developers complex battle tester concepts like encapsulation, polymorphism, abstraction, and inheritance? Which I don't care which one you use. You're gonna have to learn that anyway because that's OOP. Not yeah. even if you're using Node, yeah. right? Do you have to know that stuff anyway? No, well, it's still done. It's just JavaScript on the back end. A lot of people are trying to make it and force JavaScript to be object-oriented, but it never will be. Okay. okay. It never will be. Um, so even with things like TypeScript, it's putting. Um, ceremony on top of javascript but it's never gonna be um so okay um and so like what we have is we actually um, in my opinion we if you look at modern javascript now it's becoming more and more um complex on the back end so i think it's even to say like i'm just gonna learn node because it's easier i already know javascript i don't know if it's necessarily easier i think it's easier to build a server-side uh, project in nbc than it is in a node project regardless of your skill experience so i'm super skilled in what i'm doing i think it's just more difficult to build node in there but like you right. know there's a lot of people that know the platform they know it well and they get it and they can really do it but um it's right. because we're trying to make it object oriented it's making it more complex it's no longer just i'm just gonna write some script files and you know the moment we introduce all these other frameworks it does become equally as complex I think. right and I'd also say, I would say the complexity added by Node is more complex than picking up C Sharp is. for the other language, would be my. Yeah. Yeah, the be, setup is definitely a lot more. Setup is way more difficult. And I think do. that part is way more complex than switching the language to C Sharp. Yeah. They're really, really, really close. They're yeah. really close. Oh, as far as the, as far as the syntax. syntax, yeah. Some, I basic mean, syntax, the syntax for loops, if statements, but, very but, similar. But, but this is why people say they want to do Node because they already know JavaScript yeah. because the syntax right. part of it. Like, yeah. but they don't realize the syntax for C sharp is so close. Sometimes it's literally, it can be a character yeah. difference. Yeah. It can be Another an uppercase or lower character difference. Our friend there when he was coming, and I, and I know that's what he's thinking is, it's not really just about Node. But then we also got to figure out, okay, how do I connect to the database? What's that look like? What am I using to do that? And so in Microsoft world and .NET world, we are using any framework to communicate to the database. So that's another thing that's basically incorporated in the C sharp language. And then you have to add other packages, other things to be able to do that. Doesn't mean you can't, people are doing it every single day. I'm just saying it's not as easy as people say, just learn JavaScript and you got it. It's not, no, it's, they're, it's they're not. equally complex. It's Exactly, because it's all about the yeah. tooling and about how you arrange things yeah. and the pattern that you're using. Those are the complex yeah. things. That's the complex things. And then the, the library that you're going to pick to bring in to assist you with um, databases and things like that. Route engine, which is built into MVC, um, web or Azure pages. All of those things that you have to figure out or bring in packages to support it makes it, you're really cobbling it together something that's equivalent to the .NET framework to be able to build modern web web pages it's not just about no there's a lot of other stuff right definitely and actually look further down in the article um here's here's a comparison look they're talking about the differences between yeah. um kind of typescript and c sharp and show how, how similar they are look yeah i mean it's yeah. it, it's yeah. some of these lines are literally the same code like it's so close so your reason for one of picking one or the other shouldn't be 
oh, I already know JavaScript, therefore I'm just going to do Node. You need to yeah. consider that they're actually very, very similar in the first place and what, what the tooling looks like. Yeah. Because that's going to be the complex part. Yep. And how to set your project up and do all the other things. So, yeah. so the backend coding can be very similar. You know, because exactly. ultimately, ultimately what people need to understand is this is all built upon HTML anyway in JavaScript and the, um, the underpinnings of HTTP. So like we have Git and post actions that doesn't change. It's what do we put on top of that to be able to facilitate that? Um, I think it's, it's a lot more predictable on inside of like web APIs or MVC or razor page controllers. It's just easier to do in my opinion, but ultimately you're doing the same thing you're writing to get in the post actions and things like that to facilitate data on the back end. And the same thing holds true for node or react or angular or whatever you're doing. So, right. Right. Um, yeah. So if you want to read the article in full, you can, the links in the description for the video. So you can, uh, go read the article if you want, go comment on it. I think it was good. I gave it a little round of applause on media. I liked it. Yeah. Um, and go yeah. follow Charles too. Um, yeah, go follow Charles. Hey, Charles, if you're out there, buy me a taco for showing your article. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, we, uh, we, we love the article. Charles. It's super yeah, good. Yeah, loved it. It's a great yeah. job. Good job. Yeah. It's good stuff. Definitely. Um, right, cool. okay. Let's talk about one other thing then. You haven't seen this at all, but okay. But, um, we haven't really react. talked about this either. So, you can, <laughs> um, I got a, uh, we're talking about this on on discord um so sean yeah. put a message on uh discord talking about um a new website called levels fyi and i'd never heard of it before so apparently it's been okay. around for a minute um but it talks right. about um salaries so i was like oh interesting i'm gonna go take a look at this and see see what it's about because he was wondering if it was like if it seemed truthful or not i was like okay, okay. let's go take a look so the closest one to us was the raleigh durham area and Makes sense. you, you right. can filter this. So this is software engineer. You can have all these jobs. So we can't narrow it down past that, right? Uh, software mm -hmm. engineer is as far as we can go with it. Um, but what it does have is you can then filter by some other things. So we can look at people who have been in zero to one year and within the past two years. And I thought this was a little bit more interesting. We go to 100 of these. And we can see kind of what they list people as earning in our area for these jobs. So... This is the, the company, the level, the internal like level that they're at in the company. Number of mm -hmm. years of experience, the company, number of years of experience. So a lot of these are zero, zero, or one, one, and then their salary. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, so these, are, so these, these are, are big companies. Companies inside of, um, in Raleigh, Durham area? In Raleigh, yeah, which, which okay. we'll generally we'll, we'll say would skew a little bit higher than where we are in, in, um, in the triad. The triangle generally will be, but only by a little bit. No, they um, look accurate. So I was like, yeah, these look, these look right. I've sorted this by total compensation right so these are the lower mm -hmm. ones um so then if we go down to the end though i found this interesting um if we go down here and we go to page two um some of these just can't be right um and i think it's because they're not they're not actually classified them correctly who would mm -hmm. hire an uh a software engineer two with zero years of experience and zero thing for one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars? yeah that's not citrix right. so i'm just not just buying it yeah, it's just data. I think some of these are just wrong, but yeah, this, this, this. I think the zero probably says they don't know what the experience was. I think that's probably should be null. We don't maybe. Know. Yeah, maybe, NA, maybe. This, this, this company does claim to verify their data through W twos yeah. or through offer letters. Um, they probably so better that, the so. salary, but they didn't know the years of experience. Exactly, exactly. I think, yeah. and I agree. I think some of these are right, but when we look down at the lower end, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, those those do look right. So I would say, in general, yeah, this is a good place to go if you're interested in what company you're you're going to work for. If they're yeah. on this list, if you're going to Cisco yeah. and you're getting a, an SWE one position, then yeah, that'll tell you what to do. Um, I was dubious because these guys do offer a service too. If we look at this; they do offer like this um uh, you can buy the data type yeah stuff. you can kind of like they'll help you with oh writing they'll help you a, negotiate yeah they'll help uh, you negotiate so i'm like eh, interesting. it would it would benefit me then to see higher salaries on here wouldn't it because then they're gonna be like oh yeah. of course you can you know you can get a i don't know i don't know and you do these comparisons between companies too, which is interesting um but on the high end i was like geez this is this is kind of crazy um if you look at all the data it's like wow okay um that's that's a lot um, yeah. the, the average was 131 to 152 look median. Mm -hmm. Um, if we go and turn off, 
is. Is off. Um, and then do total compensation. Some of them are really, really high. Um, but we're talking about look at the years of experience, though. Yeah, but look at the years of experience. Okay. We're talking about these twenty have to plus be years like of experience. Ex executive roles on bonus. Exactly, which is why these yeah. things kind of I think also skew yeah. this number higher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, so it's kind of it's, it's difficult. Not, they're probably not coding. Right, exactly. I don't, I don't think they're. I mean, I could be wrong. You can go out there on Twitter and tell me the, the very few people coding are making three hundred thousand or more coding. You could be in New York or something like that. I know these are all in Raleigh. That these are all some in of Raleigh, our friends so. in Twitterland. That's they say that's what they're doing. <laughs> I turned down a job for three fifty. Like really? That's what you did? Yeah. And you're coding. You're just making websites. You're not like running the company, running the business. Um, so eight thirty six, almost a million dollars a year. Yeah, in, in Raleigh. Something, yeah, oh, you're doing what, something you know. special. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I could be wrong. So this was like, this this does give you base versus stock and bonus, by the way. So the base was yeah. 246, stock was 400, and bonus was 190. Yeah, those are people that are responsible for bottom lines. Right. This is, this is a Cisco fellow, which I'm guessing at Cisco is probably one of the highest. I can see it. Yeah. Um, so. Levels. It's probably one of the highest ones at Cisco, I'm guessing. Um. Could be wrong though. Uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I, I, I just don't know. I don't see it that much. I mean, in my experience, I don't see that much. Those salaries that high for yeah, coders. Yeah, but this is interesting. This gives you like, a, you can look at your area. Not all areas are on here, like I said. Yep. Um, only certain ones are, but Levels FYI mm -hmm. is the website. Levels.fyr. Okay. That was kind of cool. That's interesting. Um, kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think bottom line, what this tells us that learning the code, getting in the tech industry <laughs> is still the hottest industry that you need to get into, especially when we're facing re, um, we're facing this recession dead in the eye, like, you know, however you classify it, we're definitely going to slow down. But I think tech jobs are still going to be there. Now, I have seen a lot of people just to ease your fears in. A lot of people said, oh, but like Netflix laid off a lot of people. This yeah, is I was going to ask you about that. What do you think about okay. that? What do you think about the big companies laying off a bunch of people? Yeah, so I think it's true. I mean, like when you look at Facebook laying off people, um, maybe there's a hiring freeze at Google and those kind of things. But a lot of times because they're a tech company, we think that all of those people were programmers that got laid off. That's simply not true. I mean, like, you know, so the development staff is probably still pretty strong. It's just there's other areas that they had to lay off. And then when you look at the fame companies, the top five, Apple, Microsoft, you know, Amazon, those kind of companies, they're, they're a different animal than the regular everyday company that a lot of most of us work for, you know, so yeah. we're not beholden to stock price and changes in the stock market and those kind of things. Plus, some of these companies um, are unique in the industry in that they're facing headwinds. So like Netflix, particularly, this isn't that the economy slowed down, it's that the streaming market changed it dr drastically. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So, you know, suddenly, you know what? Apple says we have forty trillion dollars. We'll make us a oh streaming God, platform, yeah. and you're and like everybody else yeah, did like, the same. And they're thing. probably thinking at first, they, "Oh, that's a lot harder than you think, Mr. Tim Cook." And then you know, and then here we fast are. Four, three years <laughs> later, and then they're making um, Emmy award-winning shows like Severance on there, you know, and then everyone's flocking to it. So it is very competitive in that market. The same thing is when you look at the Facebook headwinds. Online advertising is changing. So, like you know, like. So people aren't paying search or pay per click. That's a it's a problem. Like you know, so people are saying that doesn't bring the value that I think it does. And when you have a company that's that's driven eighty percent by that, yeah, then that's a problem. You got to change the ones that aren't affected as much are things like Amazon and Microsoft. Who what did they go into? We're just going to host everything, and then they're going after Azure, AWS. Then they're also making tooling changes. How do we build things and even though they may um, hire and freeze in certain departments at Microsoft, but like, I don't think developers are being laid off. I mean, like, unless they're not performers. So I do think there may be some, some, some calling well, out there. Well, that's yeah, always the thing, isn't it? There's always an opportunity yeah. for that to happen. So, and you know, so maybe the cash isn't free and flowing as it is, um, but you know, so they, they, they have to manage expectations. So they'll cut salaries in order to meet stock price goals and things like that. So Mark Zuckerberg has a different issue. Um, and when you say, oh, there's layoffs at Facebook, they're going under. No, they made over a billion dollars <laughs> last year. They're not going anywhere. I mean, yeah. like, it's just yeah. that when you have people 
they're they're paid a different way. They're like, oh, well, we, you mean we could cut a hundred people out and the, we were good? Okay, cut a hundred people, you know, or a yeah. thousand. And so maybe we're overstaffed. Well, that's the thing too. When it when it yeah. when it boons, right? When it's really really yeah. good, these big companies yeah. also tend to overhire because they can. Because why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Because why not? Why but, not try and push the limits by overhiring? Like, why yeah. not just like push, 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 push until you yeah. just don't need to do that anymore. And then you pull back. Yeah. And I don't care what you can watch on the business news right now. And I could be wrong about this. I'm not, um, I'm not an economist, but whatever refreshing we're facing in 2022 is not going to be like 2020. Like we shut the freaking country down in 2020 <laughs> and tech people were still working. Yeah. And so like, so we're still reeling from that a little bit, but it's never going to, it's not going to be that bad. We're not going to enter into a depression, you know, where people are standing in lines for food all over the country. That's not going to happen where they, they lay off hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. We literally shut down every restaurant and small business practically in America for a year. Oh, yeah. And so, but tech people still worked and things like Zoom and all these other companies thrived. In fact, Coder Foundry so was impacted really well. where we, we had to like quit teaching in-person classes and we went online, you know, overnight when, when North Carolina said shut her down and we did. And yeah. so then we went to, went to online and it worked out for us. And so we're really excited about that. But what I want you to do is don't believe the hype. When you see layoffs at Netflix, those aren't all engineers. The software engineer will always be working. Those are customer service people and other things where they can, they right. do less important roles to them. So I don't, I don't think that are, it's it's he says that, yeah. you know, he still knows people who are getting hired at fan companies because yes, they are still hiring. Yes. They are. They're just not hiring in the droves that they were before. And yeah, they probably have let some people go, like you said, in certain departments, but trust me, there's yeah. other departments still hiring. Absolutely. AWS ain't yeah. going anywhere overnight. They still need people in that. I guarantee you that's still, that's still, yeah, hiring it's not going there. anywhere. No and neither is Azure. Um, uh, you know, even the smaller clouds like Heroku and Google cloud, all those are growing too. They're just not growing at the speed at which um, uh, Microsoft and um, AW is doing it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's true too. Yeah, maybe. And so a lot of times, here's the other thing that bad press can do. And I think that um, I'm more of an optimist. You have to understand where I come from. I'm an optimist, but my optimism is ground in reality. But when you listen to tech Twitter and like the news sites, whether that doesn't matter which one you watch, they're all negative on the economy right now. They're all saying that, you know, we're going to die and everyone's going to die and the sky is falling. And what I'm saying is tech, if there is a safe haven in work, it's in technology. Now, if you're doing other things, yeah, you might could be impacted by a layoff. I, I do see that layoffs may come, but if you're really good at tech and you're writing code and you're really good at your job, you're going to be employed. Now, the particular company may have a layoff. What they don't mess um say if you're a senior engineer at netflix and they let you go they don't follow that person to figure out how quickly they got another job <laughs> right they definitely don't do that no so you're right um, they're, yeah, yeah they're on to the next and thing so that's, the next day yeah, they're on to the next thing you know and i see a lot of people um on twitter those they'll say hey i'm leaving microsoft today and they're like maybe they were laid off maybe their position got eliminated I, I don't think that's the case i think they chose to and he says on the bigger and better things i'll let you know when you know and so like yeah. they're taking some time off because they're probably consistently well paid above average so they got money in the bank they don't have to work right away i mean if you're a senior engineer at netflix you know unless you're just really bad with money you're not like starving for a paycheck next friday and so that's the type of environment i want for you guys listening out here is learn to code because it pays well above average. You can work in any country or any company or any city in the in the world, and especially in America, and that everyone has an IT problem and everyone's looking for coders. Getting that first job is hard, but man, once you're in there, man, like even through recession, even through COVID, these people are still working. And so I think that's that's the hope that you need to think about instead of looking at it at a macro level, let's dive down into it and say, what are technology people, what are coders doing? So. Okay, you want to do some questions? We wrap. Yeah, up let's here. do it. I ranted, so let's go. No, no, no. I like it. I like it. Um, let's talk about this then. Uh, I still think Blazor is the future. Should I learn that instead of JavaScript? No. Here's what I've been saying. I do think Blazor and WebAssembly is the future, but you need to learn JavaScript today. 
So Cody, if you're out there and you have to know JavaScript, like it's really hard to build a website without JavaScript. Now, can we build it currently right now with Blazor? Yes. Is that increasing? Yeah. But it's going to take a minute. I mean, you know, so, but if you're already working and what I said in a lot of things that I'm talking about, you're already working as a dev, you should definitely look into Blazor. If you need to learn one thing right now, it's HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and some kind of server side language like C sharp. That's the thing that you need to know in SQL. So that's the five things that you need to know. Um, and currently right now that is JavaScript. It, you, you, it's the language that's in the browser. You have to use it. So until Wasm overtakes that, then that may take a few years. You know, people make fun of me about that on Twitter quite a bit. Hey, it's 2022 and JavaScript's still around. I'm like, I get it. I didn't say it was next week. What I'm saying is you need to look into it because I do sense that that shift is coming and people don't, if you're not old enough to realize like Flash was dominant and then it wasn't. And so and many people didn't make overnight. the transition to the next thing and they became, they were coding one day and now they're not coding at all. They're not even in the industry because they didn't translate their skills over. And all we're saying is be forward thinking, but if you're trying to get a job today, it's still JavaScript, you know, by, by a long shot. So there you go. Um, talk about this. Bobby, why don't you teach data structures and algorithms, low level system design in your course? I tweeted about this the other day talking about yeah. before we answer this question, I made a tweet the other day. It was like, I was talking about particularly about front end dev jobs. I was like, why do companies, who are hiring front-end developers, specifically like front-end developers doing design work a lot, a lot of the times, right? Why are you asking data structure and algorithm questions? Like, yeah, because, because so your like, hiring practice is broken, that's why. So that maybe we will get there one day, but you got to understand the purpose of our course is to build people that can build um, full stack web applications. That's our purpose of our course. So is there, and then people say, we don't teach data structures. Well, you can't build a website with C Sharp without knowing what some right. data we, structures but, but, are. I mean, like, they, they, they criticize us for like explicitly like, yeah, yeah. saying, sitting down in front of a piece with a pen and paper and saying, yeah. here is a bubble sort. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. That's, so that's what they think it is. There are some, some algos that can help you pass certain interview questions. And so what we're trying to do is how do I become a, a, a working dev that I can apply my skills and make a paycheck and make a living? And um, knowing how to traverse a binary tree is a problem that doesn't come up every day. And we don't need to commit those things to memory and just say, this is, I saw this algorithm or pathfinding algorithms. Do I ever use pathfinding algorithms? Very rarely have I ever had to do that. Um, and so those are the things I would teach myself when those things came up. And so there's also a lot of um, People out there do a good job with this. If you go geeks for geeks, they've got every algo and every data structure question on the planet. I mean, like it's already there. Um, leak code is another one that that has every those kind of things out there. And so yep. we're trying to teach you how yeah, to. Yeah, why aren't you asking? Le why aren't you asking leak code if they, they <laughs> don't? Why aren't you teach teaching MVC like leak code? <laughs> yeah, like <that's, laughs> you know, no, not C sharp MVC. <laughs> why aren't you teaching web MVC? application? Yeah, there you, you go. Know? Like, yeah, there like, you go. Uh, I don't see get ML ID anywhere in there. I mean, like so. <laughs> I think it's okay. And we have to like, basically in this industry, we have to teach what we can teach and with the resources we have, and we're going to teach that those things. And then we can't teach you every single thing. Now, maybe one day we'll sit down and make all of these other courses as well. But um, right now I want to get out .NET 6. I want to get Blazor out the door. And then maybe one day we'll come back to these lower level um, other courses, but it doesn't yeah. mean our course doesn't have value. It just means that maybe you learn that from somewhere else and you know because you've you got to remember our course has been built over years and yeah. the outcomes of the course are that people get employment after they've taken the course so that's what we're focused on so we've included enough in the course so that somebody can build some applications and get a job that's yeah. that's what we focus on and then you build we, a career from that i mean like exactly. you know and then maybe maybe you have to go back and look at some other questions you know sometimes they'll ask you now we have started doing some javascript coding challenges which teach some of these algorithms and those coding challenges so we are kind of dipping our toe into some of those things but the reason we're doing that is because people leave our course they go interview and they're like hey i was asked this i didn't know how to do that and so now we're starting to add some of those challenges back and some of those are like recursion and you know how to do different kinds of structures and things like that but data structures are included in nbc you, you can't build a website without knowing 
some of these things anyway so right. Right. i'll put this one up here because we don't talk yeah. about these enough but reginald here says i uh, never had a company asking about node.js that's just one of those things but you will if you're in a certain yeah. place not saying that's not a thing yeah. i only see sharp bought the course last year focus on c sharp javascript html css one year later i'm working for a company where they use c sharp and Vue.js. Yeah, and I've talked to several companies, and that's the stack they're doing. They have a Vue front end, a Web VI back end, and um, and the reason they're using Vue is because it's not as opinionated as React and Angular is, and so like it can be more lighter weight. They can use only certain segments of it, and you can still get your binding on the front end, and it's easier to do. Um, okay. So, but there's three of them out there. There's Angular, React, and Vue. And there's some other ones out there. I know there's Django and other <laughs> things, but like we're talking about in the JavaScript world those are um those are out there and so but i do see a lot of companies where they're talking about where they're writing view front ends using vue.js and c sharp because view is so small and lightweight but built into the templating inside of the visual studio is react and angular projects so with web api backends so yeah yep no fighter says in your boot camp what is the front end functionality done with vanilla js question mark? vanilla js yes yeah we used to so teach. we're teaching you functions wow. and how to do methods and like how to like um, change elements in the DOM and DOM manipulation, you know, logic, loop, booleans, all those kind of things that you have to know in order to actually use React. Like you have to know the base. Right. You like, can't just do React without learning JavaScript. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Because you got to know JavaScript to use it. So like, you know, so you need to understand what a function is. Um, what parameters are, um, you know, we have to start from the very, very basics so that you can then turn around and go, oh, that's a, that's an anonymous function. Yes. That's a function without a name. You know, those, those things, if we go to that right away, then it's real hard to understand that right away. So you should learn some vanilla JS, know what DOM manipulation, how it works and how to write logic before you, you break into a framework like react. So should know something you don't have to know everything but you should be familiar with some stuff right uh someone says what is better remote or on site i think it's on site but you can do whatever fits your schedule better if you've been in doing this for 10 years and you don't want to talk to anyone and you're self-sufficient remote can be perfect if you get distracted easily and you need you'd like to interact with people on site would be better especially early on in your career where people you can ask questions and help them and you say, well, I can do all that through Zoom. You can, but it's just different. It just, it's just <laughs> different, you know? Yeah. So like, it depends on who you are, but also too, you know, um, a lot of us need a, to be productive. We need a switch from home life and work life. And I, I do believe this, and that could be different on this, but like driving to work or like Kevin does, he, he has a separate <laughs> space. You need to it need, you need to change your thinking and it helps you with your mental attitude Definitely. you know where if you're doing it at the kitchen table it'd be it's just hard you know yeah. it's like really hard you know so going to a place isn't bad and i know a lot of people that are remote workers that rent an office space to do their remote work from and you're like that's yeah. crazy <laughs> that's good. you right. could be at home doing that you know <laughs> but like no it's it's that mental switch that you need to turn the light on turn the light off get started and yep. so that you can be productive. Um, so, um, and home might not always be more... the best environment too, depending on, the, yeah, I mean, exactly. I'm in a circumstance where for me it is, but you know, if you've got kids running around or they're it's on, hard, you know what I mean? Man. Or, yeah. you've, you know, you've got yeah. a million other distractions that could be, it could be around if you get home environment. It's not always the ideal thing. Um, yeah. and, and if that affects your productivity, that's going to affect your job. So eventually, yeah. eventually it will. Yeah, so there is no, cool. there's no better one or better. I think it depends on you as a person and what you think, you know? Um, so if you think, uh, here's what I would caution you on. If you think a remote job is something you can get paid for and not be productive and not really work at the job <laughs> yeah. because they're not checking you every single day on site's better for you. Yep. If you're Plus the you'll get person, your first paycheck and then you'll get fired. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, and then so like I was watching this TikTok. I don't watch TikTok. It came up in my Twitter feed. It was very funny. And this woman was complaining that she downloaded a mouse jiggler app on her machine that she's a remote worker and the mouse would move around so that the remote company couldn't, oh, couldn't tell wow. she logged out or not. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's okay. called mouse jiggler. Okay. And so, you know, and everyone was like complaining about it. But if you watch this lady's 
response to that. She says, I can't believe they're telling me what I can and can't install on the corporate laptop. Well, yeah, they can. <laughs> of course the they second can. Thing, Just because you're says, at home. What is she says, you know, and she got fired, but she said that, you know, I had a mouse jiggler and they fired me from the mouse jiggler. But if she read through it, she says, also, you know, I did miss most of my standups because yeah, I've had the- lots of thunderstorms <laughs> and lots of power outages around here. And it's just like, okay, it, remote does not equal. I don't work and they still pay me job. I mean, right. so that's right. And I know not everyone's like that. There's some people that could just like, they, they do it. You know, for me, I would go crazy if I had a job where I didn't have to do anything. I'm trying to do something right. every day. I want to code every day. Right. In fact, we were in the cohort, if anyone was watching it last night, we were in the cohort last night. Our cohort's in at 6 p.m. Eastern. And I was just coding away with the with the group there. And then someone said, it's, you know, it's five or six, Bobby. I'm like, oh, crap, I didn't know. I'm like, okay, see y'all tomorrow, you know? <laughs> you know, because I was in the groove there. I was like, ready to go. And that's what I like to do. I like to code. And so for coding, I think, Remote's dangerous, especially early on, and you can't learn a lot from others and um, you need more help. So I think on-site's better, especially early on. That's just my, my concept just, there. The story of actually lady with the master is hilarious because it's like, clearly, why, why does she even have the master in the first place, right? She clearly knows she's not using her machine, so she's got this yeah. thing on and then, then complains about the fact that she got caught having it. It's like getting caught cheating at a game and being like, you, you got yeah. caught cheating. Like, well, yeah, but I, I, I was playing. Like, I know. Like, like, what, what are you, like, really? Come on, man. Yeah. You, got, you got caught. Like, it, yeah. You clearly weren't doing the work. You were relying on. So some... you can look up Mouse Jiggle on TikTok, and, and her response is just amazing. You know, that's why she got that's fired. Amazing. She wasn't coming to stand ups, which are daily. She missed a lot of them because she had clearly power she outages. She needed a Mouse Jiggle. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, and then she also, you know, and then so she knew Mouse Jiggle to keep it logged on. So it looked like she was doing stuff. So. Um, clearly she was taking advantage of being remote and that's what you shouldn't do. So anyway, cool. <laughs> awesome. Any other right. questions? We got some, uh, yeah, let's do one last thing before we wrap up here. Um, yeah. so Ahmed wants to know, uh, he's 40 years old switching a job into it, but it's can be a while. Um, oh, but it's been a while and I make it now. So it's the, the, the age old, old, I'm 40. Am I too old? Replace so, 40 with 28. 16, 65. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we, we've had this question a million times, Ahmed. Trust me, you're not right. the first to think this. So no, you're not too old unless you think you're too old. This is what I'm telling everybody. Age is a number. It's not a mentality. And you can keep learning. And I was reading a study the other day, and I didn't mention this, that uh, you know, um, even people up into their 80s, the brain still makes new pathways when you're thinking and learning. And then uh, most people quit learning. And that's why their mental, their mental facilities fail them in their, uh, their older age. Uh, but when you see certain people that have quit learning in their eighties and they don't know anything, and then you, you come across some 80 year olds and you're like, man, that's <laughs> smart as a whip, you know? And I would say for an example, I would look at a famous politician. You could look at Bernie Sanders recall. He's got everything on top of it. He's in his mid eighties. He's got right. recall. And then we can He's exercising look at, his brain. That's, yeah, we can look at someone like Joe Biden and it's like it's not as quite as quick. And I think that's because he could have something wrong. With him, but I think a lot of us quit learning. So if you're at 40 and you've quit being inquisitive and learning things, coding could be difficult for you. But if you're that inquisitive learning, like I do want a new career, I do want to learn this. This is necessary for me to happen. You're going to be able to make those mental pathways and make that jump and do it. People have done it in their 50s or late 60s. I mean, so 40 is not old, you know? And just look at Bernie Sanders, he's 85 years old, and he's talking about like geopolitics and macroeconomics. And <laughs> right. You don't have to agree still with him. You don't things. have to agree with him right. whatsoever. But the, point, but like, the point is, he's still learning things. Yeah. And he's smart with it. He's, yeah. he's definitely quick with it, you know? So, like, and there's a lot of other, like, um, my father in law, who recently just passed away, was 84 when he passed away, but up into that point, man, he was just very quick. Um, just the things that he could re- uh, recall about events and things. And like, he knew things like, wow, okay, you know that? I mean, that's kind of interesting, you know? <laughs> so um, pretty interesting. So I think learning is a lifelong thing. Coders in general have to be inquisitive up into the point when you're not, and then you should like transition to do something else. But I think so, you can do it at four. So, so here's the thing then, that tackles the mental ability side of things. What about yeah. the uh, discrimination side of things? Like I'm applying for a job, I'm 50, let's say 50 years old. Like, do I even yeah. have a chance? 
I think that um, ageism will be real. Let's be for real. There are people that will judge you based on your age. It's the question is, how do you overcome that? And I think that if you can show them work and show them thing that you're not um, done and dusted, you know, like you're ready to go and you can build these things, I think you can break in at 50 for sure. 50 people have done it, you know, um, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. It's like, as long as you can show what you're doing. Now, people in their 50s are coding now. Most IT departments are really old anyway because programs have been doing it for 20 years. So that means, you know, they're not 20, they're... 50 right. like me, you know, so like, you know, so like, um, but you can definitely break in at any age that you want to, you know, as long as you have the desire to learn. So that's it. Cool. All right. Like cool. It. Um, any final questions or I'll get back to class and teach some class. James is in his prime. There you go. Learning his life. Yeah. That's it. That's it, James. That's, that's, yeah, the man. Attitude. I, that's it. I, I, I've read a study and I just want to bring it up. Like, man, they were saying that pathways were made um until you die which means that you can learn new things until you die that's the one organ in our body that continually is to process is that people quit working that organ that exercising brain. They quit it yeah learning they quit yeah. Exercising. they don't try to new learn new things and they you know and so those things keep us make us less smart in our older age because we're not learning new things we're not forcing the brain to learn new things so that's where you see yeah. a lot of people in their 80s like picking up French and you're like, what are you doing, dude? Like, right. why are you doing that? You know? <laughs> right. Um, I'm saving all the languages until I'm old. So yeah, then exactly. I can, <laughs> <laughs> if I learn them now, I won't, I won't have yeah. to learn them in the future. So I'm, I'm saving right, them yeah. all until the end. Yeah. And then I'll just learn them all in my eighties. That's my plan. So I'll that's keep it. Keep that's, that's, it. that's it. That's my plan. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it comes down to a type of person too, because there's some people who yep. just don't like learning new things and feel like they have to learn new things. And then yep. there are people who just enjoy learning new things and will learn something right. just for the enjoyment yeah. of learning it. I think that helps too. Yep. If you're one of those people who enjoys learning things, then uh, being yep. a developer is going to be one of your uh, favorite things because you're just constantly going to be learning. <laughs> yeah. So like, for example, I'm going to tell you what I did last week and I'm not toot my own horn. I just want to tell people like, so like I have a, a server cabinet in my house and um, one of the fans quit working. Okay. And the fan is hooked to a plug-in so you have to plug it in but it's a server fan and they've yep. rewired this i'm not an electrician i'm like yep. okay how do i do that and <laughs> like so i bought some server fans and then i ripped the connectors off that go to the motherboard and it's like oh it's got four wires which of these wires go to you know and I, I did this <laughs> yeah and then i just wrapped them up and put it back in there and i learned something new i mean i didn't know how to do that before now some of you guys are like oh that's easy you could have done that but my point is I had to you teach didn't myself know how it. to do it. Exactly. I didn't know how to do it. I just knew that there was a fan up there and I need a new one, you know, and I can't <laughs> get that industrial fan that had a three prong plug on it. You know, so like all I had was regular case fans. Yeah. So I rewired it and then I have to change the voltage and never mind. But like there's a lot to it. But like <laughs> <laughs> you can't just plug it into the wall, <laughs> you know. But you figured it out. Miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you figured right, right. So, yeah. <laughs> you found you found spins up for like thirty seconds. You're like, why did it what's going on here? It's done. Yeah. It was really yeah. windy for a thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just it just broke, you know. So oh, it happens at funny. nuclear facilities, the fan ran too fast, you know. We had that's a meltdown. Funny. There you so. go. Cool. Um, okay, let's get out of here. We're a little bit over, so I'm going to get back to class. So. I got to go teach some people some .NET, so I will see you guys later. Keep coding. We'll catch you guys later. <laughs>